Okay, how we doing? Rich Van Tassel finishing up now with our game picks for week 12 of the NFL season. And of course, we are recording audio for Get Live Radio. Next game, Seattle Seahawks 7-2-1. Two, 2-2-1 two, two, and one on the road. Travel to Tampa Bay to play the Buccaneers who are 5-5, five and 1-4 five, and four at home. Now, this is a west-to-east travel. You can't really travel much farther from Seattle to Tampa Bay. However, it is a 4 o'clock start time, not the 1 o'clock start time on the East Coast, which really troubles the West Coast teams. Injuries for the visiting Seahawks. Troy Main Pope, running back. Earl Thomas, safety, are out. Brock Coyle, running back, doubtful. Justin Britt, center, questionable. Ronnie Shields, tight end, is on injury reserve. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, four questionables. Jaquiz Rogers, running back. Luke Stocker, tight end. Brent Grimes, cornerback. Alteron Werner, cornerback. Evan Smith, the center, is out. Can Tampa Bay win a home game? They are now right there in that NFC South race. They are a game back of the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons playing a fairly difficult opponent. They could be tied at the top if they're able to get this win. You look at it, 4-1 on the road, very good for Tampa Bay, but 1-4 at home, just not getting the job done. Jameis Winston, for the most part, has limited his turnovers this season. 20 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. Russell Wilson has really limited his turnovers. 11 touchdowns to 2 interceptions. Not as many passing touchdowns as I'd like to see from Russell Wilson, but he is limiting the turnovers and he's making all the plays necessary. Seattle's defense has really been coming along of late. Look for them to continue to do that. Tampa Bay, while they need this home win, this isn't going to be the week. They continue to struggle at home. Seattle just too good. They have a lot to play for because they're still hunting the Cowboys down for potentially the top spot in that conference. And they want to put Arizona away as soon as they can and clinch that division. I see Seattle coming away with the victory. Jameis Winston, the turnovers come up and get him in this one. I'm taking it 24-13. Tampa Bay's offense struggles in this one. Seattle gets the road victory and the home woes. Continue for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Next up, Carolina at 4-6, and 1-3 and three on the road, traveling cross-country to Oakland to play the Raiders, who are 8-2, and 3-2 two, and two at home. Carolina, their injuries. A.J. Klein, running back, questionable. Ryan Khalil, center. Luke Keekley, linebacker, are out. Michael Orr, offensive tackle. And Zach Ch- Sanchez, cornerback, are on injury reserve, so they're out as well. For the Oakland Raiders, Shaquille Calhoun, linebacker, is out. The rest are questionable. Latavius Murray, running back. Michael Crabtree, wide receiver. David Amerson, cornerback. Stacy McGee, defensive tackle. Carolina, got to keep winning. I, they may have one more loss left if they want to have any hopes of making the playoffs. Certainly, Arizona, it's not Arizona. Atlanta has opened the door a bit for them, not taking advantage of their early good start where they could have put a team like Carolina away. Carolina's only two out. This is going to be an interesting game. I'm curious to see if a team that went 15-1 last year, the Carolina Panthers, that is, went to the Super Bowl, can be able to come up, go on the road in a critical situation, and get the victory over a good Oakland Raiders team. I think Carolina is going to do it. I think Oakland's flying high. They may be a bit, let's just say, lackadaisical in this one, maybe thinking their head is a little high in the clouds right now. Carolina can come in a desperate team. Cam Newton, I expect him to make all the plays in this one that are needed. Jonathan Storr does not run the ball very well. I think they'll be able to do it. Keep Derek Carr on the sideline. That secondary for Carolina, which has struggled with the departure of Cam, not Cam Newton, with the departure of Greg Norman, with the departure of Josh Norman, is going to have to be solid in this one. If they want to have any hopes of winning this game. I just like Carolina in this one. As they continue to keep their season on life support. Wild one I would expect. But Carolina 30-27 to over the Oakland Raiders. Possibly even in overtime in this game. Check to see about this one. This should be one of the more interesting games of the weekend. The New England Patriots at 8-2. They are traveling to New York to play the Jets. Who are three and seven? New England five and zero on the road. The Jets are one and three at home. Injuries for the Patriots: the four questionables: Martellus Bennett, tight end; 
Julian Edelman, wide receiver. Chris Hogan, wide receiver. Rob Gronkowski, tight end. Matthew Slater, a wide receiver, is out. For the Jets, Nick Mangold, center. Steve McClendon, defensive tackle, are questionable. Marcus Williams, cornerback. Nick Marshall, cornerback, are out. Immediately looking at those secondary injuries that should make it very difficult and very easy for Tom Brady. Difficult for the Jets to cover all the receivers. Tom Brady, I expect him to just be passing the ball all over the place. He owns the Jets as much as he owns every other team in that division. Poor season by the Jets. They're really in no position to make the playoffs. It's almost impossible. They've basically been eliminated except for the mathematical certainty. Should they get the win in this one? Will it just delay the inevitable? Yes. There's no way the Jets win this game. I expect the Patriots to pound the Jets in this game. I'm liking something like 34-14. I think this is going to get embarrassing for the Jets. Expect the Boo Birds at MetLife Stadium tomorrow as the Patriots walk all over the Jets in this one to move to 9-2. and two. And the Sunday night game, an AFC West matchup. The Kansas City Chiefs seven and three, three and two on the road. The Denver Broncos seven and three, four and one at home. Injuries for the Chiefs: two outs. Jay Howard, defensive lineman, D. Ford, linebacker. Questionables: Derek Johnson, linebacker. Marcus Peters, cornerback. Stephen Nelson, defensive back. For the Denver Broncos, only one listed: Casey Crater, the long snapper, is out. We've talked about the long snapper situation, though, especially in a game against two evenly matched teams. It could come down to a field goal. Who knows? Now, if you remember, we talked about the Redskins not having their long snapper. They missed two field goals on Thanksgiving. Would I say that it was a direct result of the long snapper? I don't know. But certainly that's something to keep an eye on. That long snapper's injury, people would be like, long snapper, what do you you think? That's something serious. It very well can be, so stay alert for that. As far as this game goes... I'm expecting that Trevor Simeon is going to get the start. He has not come along that well. You look at the numbers, they're somewhat similar to Alex Smith. Alex Smith has completed more passes, nine touchdowns to four interceptions, but they really have just about the same amount of yards, a little over 2,000. Trevor Simeon, 12 touchdowns to seven interceptions. I look at D. Ford being out for the Kansas City Chiefs. D. Ford is borderline all pro this year. He's had a lot of sacks. Pressure on Trevor Simeon as pressure on any quarterback would help the Kansas City Chiefs. The Broncos will be able to get pressure on Alex Smith with Von Miller, with DeMarcus Ware, with Shane Ray, with uh, Garrett Wolf. They have the ability to keep Alex Smith uh, on the move, having to get the ball out of his hands early, yet that plays into the Chiefs' hands when they do it. Marcus Peters against Demarius Thomas, assuming Marcus Peters is able to go. Two big physical players. That'll be the matchup. I'd look for Emmanuel Sanders to get a lot of the throws with Marcus Peters putting the blanket on Demarius Thomas in this one. Demarius Thomas over 50 receptions, just shy of 700 yards and five touchdowns. Remember, he's playing with a quarterback who was a seventh-round pick last year and has not played all that much. Critical game in the wild card picture. The loser of this game will certainly open the door for a team like a Miami, a Buffalo should they get the win, Baltimore and Pittsburgh, if one of those teams gets the win, they'll only be one back. Of course, one of those teams can win the division, so they'd still be in the wild card race. So it's leaving things open for the division just a little, or excuse me, for the wild card just a bit. I like the Chiefs in this game. The Chiefs had a tough and somewhat embarrassing loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last Sunday. I expect them to right the ship, come out and get this one. Regardless of how much pressure is on Alex Smith, they get the ball out of his hands quick. That's always been a staple of an Andy Reid offense, and I expect it in this one. Chiefs 27-20 to over the Denver Broncos for the victory in this one. Okay, and just a reminder to all those listening on Get Live Radio, you can also find me on my YouTube channel, the Rich Van Tassel channel. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you all so very much.